Hi, everybody. My name is Don Hahn, and I'm your uh, your moderator today for a, a terrific discussion with the filmmakers behind Flea, um, one of my favorite documentaries, animated films of the year. Um, we have with us uh, today the director of the film, um, Jonas, Jonas Por Rasmussen, and the producer of the film, Charlotte de la Gournerie. And uh, guys, it's it's fantastic to talk to you. Uh, I appreciate your time today. And we're gonna go through and just kind of mine the depths of what uh, what you got into when you were making this movie, because I think it's a fascinating and really fresh um, look at documentary filmmaking, which I really appreciated. Um, Jonas, this, this comes from, uh, in large part, from you and a, and a lifelong friend of yours, or a fairly long friend of yours, uh, Amin, who's basically the subject of the film. Can you just tell us a little bit about that backstory, about how you guys met and, and what kind of inspired you to uh, actually go to the lengths of making a film about him? Of course, and, and thanks for doing this, Don. Um, Pleasure. Um, so I met Amin when I was uh, 15, um, and I, I grew up in this very small rural Danish village. Um, and one day Amin arrived uh, all by himself. Uh, he was 16 and, and stayed in foster care with a family just around the corner from where I lived. Um, and we pretty fast became very good friends. You know, we met up every morning at the bus stop going to high school uh, and, and just, you know, chatted. Uh, and slowly this friendship kind of grew. And I was, of course, already, already back then curious about how and why he came. Uh, but he didn't want to talk about it. And I, of course, respected that. Um, but, you know, uh, then our friendship grew and, and all the time, this kind of black box was in there, you know, this, this, this past that he didn't want to talk about. Um, mm. And so, so my, my curiosity was always there, you know, in our friendship. Um, but, but it was something he didn't really like to talk about. So, you know, that's kind of how it was. Um, until uh, 15 years ago, where I, um, I had started doing radio. I have a background in radio and I right. asked him if I could do a radio documentary about his past, about his story. And he told me that he, that he knew that he would have to share his story at some point. And he felt like he really wanted to share it, but he didn't feel ready, quite ready yet. Um, but when he would, would be ready, he would like to share it with me and then we could do something with it. Um, so I kind of had it in the back of my head for a long time that this was something we could do together at some point. We just kind of had to wait for the right time and also the right form to, to do it. Um, and then again, years passed and uh, eight years ago, I was invited for this workshop in a, in a city here in Denmark called uh, Vibor. And the workshop was called Anidocs where they invite animators and documentary filmmakers to develop ideas for animated documentaries. Um, and uh, I thought, okay, but maybe this is a good way to, to do his story. And, uh, we met up again, uh, again, and and he was really intrigued by the fact that he could be anonymous behind the animation because, you know, what you see in the film, what you hear, is his real voice telling the story for the very first time, and it's really not easy for him to talk about these things uh, because it's 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 very traumatic experiences. Um, so the fact that he didn't have to be in the public eye with these and he could still keep control over when he wanted to to talk about these things uh, was really what enabled him to to say, okay, but this is this is the right time and the right way to, to do this. And, and that's kind of, you know, the genesis of the story. That, that's why the whole thing started at that workshop. And that's also where I later met uh, Charlotte and the rest of the Sun Quentin team. And the story, I think because of the technique you use, the story is really intimate because it's almost um, like a therapist's couch. Uh, but it, it, did that come from your radio uh, drama experience of yeah. um, how you interviewed people? Or how, how did you get him to... Um, emote and, and give you so much at that point. Yeah, but that, that technique of interviewing with him laying down and having his eyes closed is, is technique of interviewing that uh, I've used in radio. And in Denmark, we have quite a strong tradition for, for doing radio documentaries. And this yeah. technique of interviewing is, is quite well known here. And, and it's really because, you know, in radio, you, you, you don't have an image. So you, re you need your subject to be very descriptive in their way of, of talking. And by having them lay down and close their eyes, talk present tense, uh, it, it creates presence in, in the, their way of, of talking and, and, uh, and you ask them to be really descriptive about everything. Um, um, so, for example, in the beginning of the film, he's in his childhood home, he's in the garden uh, and he's with his siblings and the sisters telling stories about the father. But before we would go into that, I would ask him to just describe the, the location. You know, what did the garden look like? What did the house look like? Yeah. Uh, what did it look like outside the walls of the house? And this would give, of course, the animators and me a lot of information that would kind of build the story on. 
but it would also bring him back to the specific situation and he would kind of relive the memory and new, new memories would occur from that, uh, things he had otherwise forgotten. So it's really a way of kind of uh, make, you know, stories from the past feel current again. Hmm. It's so effective. Um, and Charlotte, you came to this project um, many years ago um, and, and had studied um, and wanted to be an animated animation producer, which uh, personally speaking is a crazy idea. But um, I really respect and understand the patience that you must have had to, um, first of all, raise money and get interest in this because you were going to people asking what, saying here's an animated documentary or how, how did you approach it in those early years when you were trying to gain some, some funding and some interest in that kind of thing? Uh, first, thanks, Dan, for, for having us. Um, it's, it means a lot that someone like you is like uh, talking like about, about the, the film. Like, so, yeah, so thanks about that. So sure. about your question, um, I've worked with Monica Elton, who is a documentary uh, producer. So, uh, and that's really, um, I think, the match that have really made this film possible. Um, first, because I think it was really a strong wishes from, from both of us to to take the time to make that film like to respect what um, to respect the story that uh, Amin gave to Jonas yes. and also to give the rights um, to find the right visual language uh, for the film. So with the background of Monica, who's coming from a well-known company called Fire Cut for Real, they're really well known for documentary with um, the act of killing and the look of silence that are both Oscar nominated yes. movies. Uh, so they were able to like, uh, with their strong uh, background documents to raise money together with um, Sun Creature, this, which is the studio that I, I co-own. So we, we were, Sun Creature were coming with the um, knowledge of animation. And so the knowledge of animation combined with the knowledge of documentary and really trying to both with the financing, but also with the, um, uh, the knowledge of of both background, the, the network and the technique and the the pipeline and processes that um, that came together. Um, so I think it's it's at the beginning it was really an interest of finally there's like someone come oh, not finally but a strong um, document company that is interested to do an animation movie. Yeah. There's not it's not often that it happened and it happened that Jonas has made feature film before. Uh, in live action and, and that Monica has produced documentary before. So it's like people with very strong uh, background that that's, are willing to try animation. So for me, but also for Kenneth, the animation directors and the other people in, from the animation team we were like, that's um, an amazing opportunity to both tell a story that, that we think is important and also to, to work with people that are coming from the from, from documentary, but that has the uh, one of the best background documentary. So, yes. um, and yeah. it's really it's really evident in the film. And I, I think I was reading somewhere about your editor, uh, uh, Yanis. I Yanis, think his name yeah. is, who is an extremely uh, experienced uh, documentary live action editor. Um, and that must have been really interesting for him and for for all of you to be able to have somebody like that on board to help. Because I think one of the the really innovative parts about the film is the way you deal with time. It's not told in a linear fashion. It's told in a very um, abstract almost fashion in terms of its use of time. And that's really uh, unusual for any documentary, much less an animated documentary. What, uh, Jonas, what was that like working not only with uh, Jonas, but also with some of those uh, other collaborators and bringing together the animation and documentary worlds. Um, obviously, there's a tremendous strength there for how the movie turned out. No, but but definitely, and and I really enjoyed, you know, having all these creative minds around me. You know, normally I've I've done documentaries myself, and you know, it's it is kind of a lonely process because when you <laughs> yes. do documentaries, you you're, you kind of you shoot on your own. Maybe you have a DOP sometimes, and then then you edit on your own, and maybe you have an editor sometimes. But but you really do a lot a lot of work by yourself. So to all of a sudden to have a big team of creative minds around me who could really help, you know, push me and push the story in a direction and, and have all these creative conversations was very inspiring. Um, and and it was for, for Janus as well, it was the first time working in, in animation and, and just to ex experience this process of, of doing this film was really quite extraordinary. Also, because, you know, we've both been used to, you know, you go out and shoot 
uh, and then you bring the material back home to the editing room and then you kind of become a slave of what you brought home. Like if you yes. didn't get the exact shots you need for a sequence, then that's just too bad. You need to work around it. Uh, but here, because it's animation, you know, you can, in, in doing the animatic before you don't start animating anything before the edit is locked, you, you, it gave a, a, a quite a deal of freedom and, and we could really be precise in how we wanted to solve the, 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 the different scenes, which was uh, a, a totally different uh, process. Uh, about, you know, the, the jumping in time and, and, and being not linear, uh, it's something I work with a lot in, in, in my films and I really enjoy kind of having this more kind of disruptive uh, style in, in editing and storytelling. Yeah, it works so well and, and it tracks so well. Um, it, and the style of the film is really interesting to me because it's very, um, uh, very arty, very um, hand-drawn um, in a way that is uh, incredibly expressive. I think without giving too much of the story away, there's a scene, for example, in a shipping container that is um, at times very abstract, but I can't imagine a more powerful way of showing that moment in your story than the way you do it. And it's it's this beautiful hand-drawn piece of art when, you know, on one hand, and it's an incredibly involving piece of drama on another. Um, and your staging choices, where you put the camera and that kind of thing are very uh, liberated because of the art of animation. Um, did you find that even in your in your um, uh, compositions and staging and and that kind of thing with working with animators? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, it was really uh, in collaboration with uh, with Kenneth Lelica, who's the animation director, who also was a lead storyboard storyboard artist, uh, and and Janus really finding out okay, but how can we solve these sequences and how expressive can we be? And, and in the sequence you mentioned, you know, um, it's. It's a sequence, I'm gonna spell it uh, um, a little bit, uh, but it's a sequence where uh, Amin has two sisters who are trying to escape for Sweden and they're in this container going to Stockholm, uh, but they can't get out. Um, and Amin wasn't there, you know, so he wouldn't know what it looked like inside that container. But because all of this, all this story, all the, the film, the core of the film is this testimony, you know, it really was what was in his voice and the way he talk, talked about it. And even though he wasn't there, you know, his emotion was there. He, his emotion of being scared, of being 12 year old boy stuck in, 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 in Moscow, not knowing what was happening with his sisters, that emotion was there. So we, we kind of had a focus on, okay, but how can we show this emotion instead, instead of trying to look, show what it looked like inside that container, because he wouldn't know, then try to show what is the emotion he has inside. Uh, and so we invented this more kind of expressive and surreal style of animation to support these sequences where he's kind of in his emotions. Yeah, I loved it because it was um, the heights of what animation can do that no live action camera can do. And I just love that. Charlotte, you were going to say? I think I think Jonas has been very open to try like very daring choices artistically, I think. And that's what like when working with him, it's been quite amazing for the animation team to be able to propose a visual language and to say, OK, let's try this. And, and, and Jonas was like, you know, he has like, is lead animation storyboard and uh, board artist Kenneth and just the art director that they were proposing different style and trying out like for those graphical moments it was we tried on chalk you know and like scan and see like because we wanted this really um, rough but also um, like because it's traumatic event we need to be subtle as well so I think it's it's a lot of R and D on how 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 much you can push the style but and how can you challenge the audience and I think. I think Jonas has been very open-minded on, on, on like during the whole process of making this film. One of the things you do, uh, and Charlotte, maybe this is a question for you as well, is um, use live action uh, period footage to call back what is basically a very true story about was, what was going on with the uh, Mujahideen in uh, Afghanistan. And every time those live action clips came on, it was like a slap in the face of like, oh my God, this is real, you know? And um, what was that decision, that process, how to integrating those must have been, it was a very fresh idea I found. Um, Charlotte, what was the, what was that process and that kind of um, idea like? I think it was really the idea from the beginning because when we really started to work on the movie, we thought it would be 20 minutes of animation and the rest will be live action, both oh. interview and, 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 and archive footage. But, but along the way, we realized that it, it was too dangerous for Amin to, like, to, to see his face. And then 
And then we realized it was easier to finance a feature film length uh, uh, instead of a 52 uh, TV series uh, format film. So I think it was, this idea was really from the very, very beginning. And, you know, finally got for real, the documentary company there, that's, that's what they, like one of the best trends that they can dig into like library of, of, of archive footage that they were presented to Jonas. I think Jonas, you, you can talk about how you choose those, those, those specific footage. Um, yeah, please. Yeah. Jonas, how, yeah. how did you get that? Because it was so like, jarring in an in a emotional way when those came on. But, you know, in the beginning, it was just me on YouTube, really. <laughs> <just finding. laughs> That's how Whatever I, I could find. Yeah, but, but really just finding what I could find from Afghanistan in the 80s and Moscow in the 90s. And there's not a lot, you know, because there's, people didn't have smartphones back then. So it's really just trying, trying to find, you know, the, the few documentaries that was shot in Afghanistan in the 80s and Moscow in the 90s and see, okay, okay, but here's some material we can pick. But, you know, it's really about uh, making sure that this felt authentic, that, 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 that to remind people throughout the film, as you said as well, to get reminded that this is a true story, that just underneath the animation, this is, this is a thin layer of animation. And if you can't take that away, underneath it's a real story. It's real human being. It's real histor historical events that happened that kind of pushed Amin out of Afghanistan and, and put him on this journey or this flight. Um, so it was really a process of, of, of finding material that could support the testimony and, 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 and make sure that it felt uh, true and real. I think what we really try to do is like, how do we transition from, li from live action to animation? And I think that's what we really try with, with Kenneth and just the art director of like, how do you, because other, it can be very tiring for the, for the audience to switch because the timeline is so like back and forth. And then yeah. you have three layers of vi different la uh, visuals. So how do you still keep the attention of, of the of the audience? And I think that's really what's um, one of the challenges we have had. And we've did some, test screening, you know, while we were doing the production with different people from from movies and and uh, to see like is that too much what we what what we what we're doing? But uh, and I think that's really a fine tune. And I think it's it's trying out having a really strong editor like again Janus really like um, working with the storyboard. You know, at some point we had the storyboard artist sitting next next door to the editor and he was like okay maybe we should have this shot at that angle and i think it's like being able to play um with the visual and 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 uh, in a very subtle way but but so yeah you need an editor and a storyboard artist to and of course yeah you want us to like direct but it's uh it, it wasn't obvious to how, how we were going to do it yeah it, it uh i think it's part part of it is what makes the movie so attractive it's a very uh, um, emotional story and it's powerfully told, but it's, it's told in a really fresh technique. And um, I, I guess one of my questions is, do you think, there's been very few documentary animated films in the past, one or two maybe. Um, do you think this will inspire others to kind of follow that? It, it, it certainly made me sit up and think, oh my God, this is the kind of thing I've always wanted animation to do. And uh, you know, what are your feelings on that? Do you feel like, not only for the outside world to be inspired by what you've done in terms of a fresh technique of telling nonfiction stories, but in your own lives and your own careers, it must also inspire you to do other films like this. Uh, but but definitely, you know, to me, it was a great experience. Uh, I think I think Shala just talked about from the animation side, but I I really hope that that people will see the potential in in, in doing these stories and in, in, in animation because there's such a rich. It's such a rich format, and 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 you can bring so much, so so many things to life in animation. Um, I don't know, Joe. Have you have you been approached by other people who wanted to do uh, animated documentaries, or is it? Did you feel that there's a uh, more interest in it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's there's some interest, in it, and I think people are curious to see how, uh, like, how how do you make it, and how do you raise money to 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 do to do a movie like that? I think it's what I, I what I really like about the fact that it's been recognized at Sundance and at NSC is like the people from the industry in animation and documentary are um, acknowledging that it's a movie that, you know, you can't put in a box. And I think animation is a medium. It doesn't really matter. It's to tell stories. So I think that's it, that really shows that, that um, it, it's, we, we, can, we can play with that medium. It, it doesn't matter which genre is it. Um, and I think that's, I'm, I'm very pleased that that uh, that that's 
fleas a little uh, in animation and 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 the documentary section in, in many festivals. Um, I I think yeah I'm I'm hoping we can do more of that because like one of the arguments we were trying to raise money for the film was like because we were like okay but with this money you can do four documentary why are you going animation right right you know, and and we're like but using animation hopefully the audience will will be broader and maybe younger as well and and that's still my hope that we're going to see how the movie is going to um, do in the theaters and and uh, uh, how it's going to be received by by a younger audience but i i think it's it's people of of a generation that are it's coming more and more that that people want to see uh, films uh, for adults using the animation technique because that's yeah and and I think Flea shows that, and um, and I think we should try to be daring. But it's not an easy road. Like we took, yes, yeah, six, seven years to finance the movie. Like oh, uh, you, 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 yeah, it's a bit painful. So <laughs> I'm hoping that that the next one will not take that long. Um, yeah, I would think after the success you've had on this, uh, hopefully people will pay more attention to uh, the work you guys are doing, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I really thought um, that. I just had one or two more questions and then we'll close up, but I, I really thought the performances by the animators was extraordinary. You, uh, you might look at it and say, well, this is, um, I, I've heard some people call it, you know, crude or, or it's uh, simplified, but I think it's very kind of modernist. It's very, um, a simple approach to the animation, but it's very much driven by draftsmanship and strong choices for acting and for performance. Um, how, you know, Jonas, I free both of you, how did your animators um, step up to this, knowing that they really had to perform as actors on the screen with their drawings? No, but I, I think um, a lot of them thought it was it was a fun thing to do because it's it's not something that they do normally, you know. So so to have an experience to work on a project where it's uh, you know it's not for kids, it's it's real, it's, it's a real person behind it, it's it's a real story and and. It, it's it's a very profound story. Uh, so to work on something that has feels meaningful, uh, I think a lot of a lot of the animators really kind of felt like okay, but this is this is important. Uh, this is not just work. You, I'm not a gun for hire now. But this is important work. I could really sense that in the scene that 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 people really put a lot of effort into it. And and of course we had had I had Kenneth as my animation director, who's just amazingly talented and 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 so good at both leading his team and also animating himself um and you know some people think it's rotoscope but it's just because he's so good at animating uh and, yeah. and so so it's um i was i was to be honest i was totally blown away by the talent of these people you know um yeah. I, I i was too i'm right there <laughs> with you it is uh deceptively hard to do what um what they did and i was sitting there watching it uh, thinking this is uh, an amazing feat of acting for the animators. Um, so at, I guess my final question is, um, uh, what are your hopes for audiences to take away from this film, for viewers to take away? Because you've been to Sundance, you've been you've invited to Cannes and, and awards and accolades, um, uh, too numerous to mention. Uh, and, and being Denmark's choice to um, go to the Oscars is, particularly relevant in that how important people see this work. Um, looking back on it now, uh, what do you hope that audiences take away from a story or an emotional standpoint? No, but I, th I think it's really uh, that they relate to a story and, and, and you know, they, they see a world that they wouldn't normally see, you know, both be from a refugee and also from a, from a gay refugee. Uh, but even more so, as I said before, I think this thing about learning how much people can carry around, because um, a lot of people carry things around, not necessarily being refugees, but from their past, things that affect them in every day of their life. Um, and just being able to, yeah, I, like if I could inspire people just a little bit to, to listen more <laughs> and, and share more, I think that would be, uh, uh, it's a big hope, but I, that's really what I would hope for, that, that people would, you know, start listening a little bit more to what people have to say and also start to share a little bit more uh, of the things that are hard to talk about. Yeah. Charlotte, how about you? Yeah, the thing is about reflecting. Um, really, like, I'm st still watching the film and I've, I've, I've watched it so many times, but 
you know, you can take away the friendship, the family, like the, there's so many layers to the film that I, and I think that's what I've found very strong is that it's not our film anymore. It's like people are, are, are you know, making it their own and they, they are taking away things that, you know, has not touched me at that point, but will maybe later or maybe not. But that's, I think that's, I think it's, um, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's about being reflecting and, and, and respect. I think it's, it's uh, about, uh, and, uh, and it's actually a very, it's a peaceful movie. Like I think you take, when you, when you get out after screening, it's, it's very, makes you peaceful. Yeah. I, I, that's, and it still does after watching it, uh, I don't know how many, like another time. And, um, and, and I think that's good emotions uh, to, that a movie can do. Uh, and um, It really is. And, and it stays with you too, I found. It certainly yeah. stayed with me and it certainly made the animation industry take notice uh, because it's such an exciting use of animation. Um, and, and that's the, the paradox of it all is it's uh, an incredibly human, incredibly intimate movie, especially for the times that we live in. Uh, and the irony is that it's all told with drawings. Beautifully so. So um, thank you to both of you. Uh, it's just a pleasure to uh, meet and talk with you. And um, and for our listeners, if you hadn't had a chance yet, get out and see um, Flea. It's an amazing experience in storytelling and the art of animation. Charlotte, thank you. Jonas, thank you. And congratulations. Thank you, Dan, so much. Thank you, Dan. Thank you.